version that's uh that's cpu only well it's doing that i wonder if you can throw something like that at like uh like aws or something and just start using their stuff <laughs> they certainly have more resources than i do a few more <laughs> i wonder if i can get but that would be even funnier my, if, if you I brought that on amazon with, with a slowdown <laughs> it's pretty cool though so yeah huge thank you to, to andre for for throwing that together and uh He's got some other things in mind for it. So, um, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll give him some time. I know he said he's like, like the rest of us, you know, he's in, in the middle of a job and there's a million things going on and everything. But if he has the time, uh, he'll, he'll, uh, he, I, I, I don't want to give anything away, but uh, hey, this is my version of a safe harbor statement, I guess, right? But uh, that, that he does have some things planned that sound really, really cool. So huge thanks Thank to him for, uh, for, taking, for taking that on and, 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 and giving it out to the community for free because that's really just a, a beautiful thing. Uh, let's get started here. Oh man, that's Ooh. twice. I gotta say, it's I'm trying. Out, time. I'm trying Is out a new time warp render. No, I wish <laughs> that would at least there'd be a reason why that's happening. Now, I'm trying a, a different laptop as my second machine here, and it's it's um it's intermittent. Let's let's say that right. Jiggle the cable. And miss. Maybe. That's what I just did. That's Unplug what I just it, plug did. it back in. That's what I, I did that as well. I tried all the normal IT remedies for it. Um, Are you from the let's, past? Let's kick this off, right? So first of all, <laughs> we want to thank our friends at Synesis for sponsoring Logic Live. Uh, they've been my personal reseller for years. You guys have heard the speech before, and I can't say enough good about them. But thanks to Synesis Solutions Development Integration and Support, supporting Flame Artists since 1997. I don't know how many of you saw... Uh, on on uh, on Facebook on the Facebook Logic uh, the other day, but there was just some sad news. We lost another member of the community this uh, this past week. It was uh, Emilio Perez uh, mm -hmm. out of Madrid, and uh, and Stefan. I never had a chance to meet Emilio, but uh, Stefan put something really really beautiful up on uh, on Facebook Logic. Uh, just another sad news in the extended flame family. Our good friend Emilio Perez passed away three days ago. Emilio was based in Madrid and was a longtime smoke and flame artist, very well respected and beloved in the Spanish finishing VFX community. You might not know him, but if you like connected conform, shot distribution, et cetera, Emilio is an active member of the beta program, helped us dream and build these great workflows that many of you cannot live without. Emilio was a funny guy and was able to quickly understand concepts way before they became GUI in a work progress software, in a work in progress software, and was the kind of user writing long emails with notes after a long day of work to help make flame better. Emilio, my friend, you will be missed. Did um, did any of you ever have a chance to meet Emilio or or work with him? I met him once at uh, IBC briefly. Mm -hmm. Super nice, you know. Can't say any, you know. He was a great guy. Seemed great. And I, I was I've been part of the beta forever as well. And he yeah he would always have pretty thorough stuff and constant consistent feedback. He was yeah he was always there. Uh. Yeah, he actually came to Montreal to uh, to help us out figuring the the connected conform workflow, and he was uh, a key player in this uh, in this workflow. He really helped us out and uh, always uh, always kind and uh, polite and uh, really really bright. Uh, so it was a it was a pleasure working with him. Anybody else? Well was it COVID or something completely different? You know, I don't know. Yeah, I'm just wondering what kind of impact it's really having, not just flame-wise, but post. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of, um, it really kind of, the whole COVID impact thing really, uh, I think, becomes clear when you start thinking about the like the secondary and the and the tertiary kind of it's not just you or maybe the people you interact with but the 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 second ring and the third ring you know uh when you really when you start to think about that you can kind of grasp what a what a massive impact this whole mess has had and you know here's hoping you know i know i know it's become a cliche now but with the light at the end of the tunnel but with the you know vaccines finally in production hopefully hopefully we'll hopefully. be Right in hopefully, September. Hopefully, it's not a train on coming. 
<laughs> I don't. No, thank I don't you, know. If, thank you for bring. Thank yeah. you for bringing the room back up where it needed to be, Charles. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, well, it was interesting. I don't know how much experience people have had with like client as a freelancer. Clients, you know, I haven't been in anybody's facility since for last the first week of last March, and that was only there was only yeah. four of us in that office to begin with. But actually, last week somebody was like, "Oh, can you come in?" And immediately I'm looking at the phone like, what? Do you have hazmat suits? What kind of contact tracing is going on? And it turns out it was it was just literally me and the other technician that's been like uh, dealing with their place. And I'm like, okay, when was his last test? Oh, well, here's my result. And, you know, 10 feet social distancing. Tell you what, let's meet outside the building, you know? <laughs> but uh I really wonder what the impact's going to be on that when people want you to come back into their, you know, forty dollars square foot high price environment. Um, I saw a friend post he's in Eats Home the other day. What's that? Hmm. I saw, saw a friend of mine post that he was back in Eats Home working. Ooh. Hmm. He was a picture from in the suite. Yeah. Oh, wow. in, Bra in Brazil, we voted a worse president than you guys. So uh, that's saying a lot, man. Yeah, so, Brazilian, so you can say, see how Brazilian are dumb. So there are a lot of, a lot of, I, I have denied mm -hmm. to go on, 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 uh, on a suite like three times already. I always go, I don't want to, I don't want to take the, those chances. But there are people working on site. So. Yeah, I had, I had uh, clients who actually wanted to have a full uh, presentation the week before Christmas. And it took a lot of convincing on the part of the producer and myself to say, no, we're going to do this like we do in the 21st century with the global pandemic going on. We're going to do this with <laughs> Zoom and Framehole and all that stuff. But honestly, I believe that what COVID is doing to our industry is more like supercharging a development that's, that was already there. And for example, I was offering remote work for like since 2015 and I really had a hard time selling that because people <laughs> always wanted me to get in. I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah, I can do this from my office for, for a good rate and I've got all the equipment and it'll work just fine. And it took a fucking pandemic, pardon my French, to actually get that ball rolling. So I, I think it would have happened anyhow, just not with the speed we are currently facing it, but it would have happened sooner or later. I've been going in every day since the, the middle of May. Wow. Pretty much the only one there. I'm, I'm usually the only one there. The engineer comes in for a few hours, uh, maybe one or two days a week. And it's, it's the happiest you've been in years. Is that what you're about to tell us? Well, you know, it used to be, I used to look forward to going in on a weekend because I'd be all alone and get so much work done. And now it's like, you know, I got to work on the weekend. Shit, it's like every other day. It's actually, it's actually not that great after a while. You know, I, I kind of mm -hmm. miss not having people around. <laughs> wow. I was saying uh, the other day, I miss my commute. Like I used to have a 45 minute train ride into the city and that was, um, uh, that was almost like, like a forced routine. In New York, like if I was trying to work out like a Python built -in book or reading time. I would do it then. Like that was it. That was my 45 yeah. minutes in and out. And it's thank God, like Fred Warren was up at eight o'clock in the morning every day because like his <laughs> schedule and my schedule on the train always seemed to work out. But I, I find it much more difficult, you know, now where I'm like, my commute is just on the other side of that door you know, to carve out 45 minutes to sit down and get something done. So. You lost your buffer. Yeah, right? Well, I just showed you that. <laughs> like my low willpower, by the way. I just admitted that to the group. <laughs> um, I wanted to. You're amongst uh, friends. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. The love friends is palpable. I can almost world. taste it. Um, Let's go back. If provided, of course, the um, laptop number two here. Yay. All right. Is working. Uh, <laughs> we got some fun stuff to talk about with the forum or as far as the forum is <clears throat> going. And thank you, everybody who's participated in with the forum. Um, the first thing we wanted to do is, is announce some winners. Uh, and then winners is air quote because we're all winners here uh, in the Tim Farrell jargon contest. 
Uh, for those of you who tuned in uh, um, just before the new year when Tim was on, uh, Tim has staked his claim to uh, coining the word conform. And uh, none of us, you know, let's first of all, round of applause for Tim, you know, for coming up with something that we both love and hate uh, so, so passionately. And, uh, and he's never, you know, gotten a penny in royalties from it, I'm sure. Um, so, but Tim challenged, he put a challenge out to the group there to go ahead and come up with your own piece of jargon, your own word that uh, will have the same like 30 year staying power as Conform has had uh, for, for, for him and for all of us. So uh, went through and, 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 and picked some that I think uh, definitely exemplify, you know, not only uh, the kind of flame artist spirit, uh, but that have that kind of staying power, I think. So in no particular order, uh, the first one's going to go to Chokehold here uh, from Greg Gilpatrick. I'll go ahead and, and spotlight this so everyone can see. Uh, a definition is time spent in the liminal space between the, your first hold and booked where the producer slash client slash IT department are calling, emailing, Zooming you about a job, but you still have not officially been booked yet. You couldn't possibly entertain work from other clients because you're basically booked. We'll let you know real soon. In the meantime, why don't you start on this conform? But don't worry, it's a lift. And uh, get you a booking confirmation when I can. And what's your rate again? So I know that, uh, I mean, I haven't been a freelancer in a long time, but I certainly remember this experience. And I'm sure it's something that everyone in the freelance community can, can certainly relate to. So uh, how about a round of applause for Greg Gilpatrick, huh? <laughs> All right, moving right along. This is from Danny Yoon. This one uh, touched me in a certain way, in a certain, like, in a certain place. Um, I just, it was something I could relate to. This is passing a pineapple. Uh, definition is working on or finishing an arduous task, project or task, as in, uh, you know, F word. Fuck, stitching together those moco passes was like passing a pineapple, you know? <laughs> and hey, after we pass this pineapple, let's have a rap party and get drunk, you know? <laughs> we have definitely all been there. We have definitely oh, all God. handled a project or three uh, that are the equivalent of passing a pineapple. So big round of applause for Danny Yoon there for putting into words. He, he did what the poet always aspires to do. He put into words a feeling that everyone can relate to. <laughs> All right, next up, we have uh, the lovely and talented Kirk Balden with his contribution, there he is right there, uh, with his contribution of Wrecking Ball. Uh, Kirk, you want to read that for, the, for the, the, all the friends listening at home? Uh, sure, um, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, CD owner, founder, or member of senior management, despite a lack of familiarity with the various stages or comments or approvals, must be consulted before finish before shipping, and will reliably re demand a hard left turn. Oh, amen. Um, amen. I actually had this happen once with the aforementioned owner CD literally brandishing an assault rifle. So that was <laughs> drunk. Oh well, yes. I mean. <laughs> um, so uh, I, uh, under, in, in what other state of mind do people brandish? You know what I mean? Fair question. Yeah. So that was, uh, I didn't stay in that job for long. <laughs> wow. It seems like the kind of thing where the other party involved should remain nameless, but enough of us know who you're talking about that. Uh, yeah, we got it. Oh, I mean, the company's <laughs> out of business now. So Good day, all. It's hydraulics. I'll just say. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, name and name. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kirk, for bringing us our first cease and desist here at Logic, Logic Live. <laughs> All right. Next up is a shove from Andy Davis, and I love this one. The definition is this is the opposite of a lift. When you do a spot and the cut downs include extra handles and or shots. So it's not a lift, it's a shove. And I kind of love that. So we're going to give a round of applause to Andy. And then uh, I had my own contribution here. Um, we had an expression around the office for a while that was called airtight. Uh, and the, the definition is when you're working on multiple jobs at the same time, you feel taken advantage of and have zero bandwidth for anything else, AKA when it feels like you're, you know, occupied in every bodily orifice, you know, including your nose and ears. So when someone says to you, hey, you got a second, you're like, sorry, man, I'm airtight right now. You know, they're coming at me from all directions. <laughs> So I will not, I, I did not originate this. It was a, a former colleague at Lively and, uh, and it's just, it applies to many situations. So 
let's uh, give a round of applause to everybody who contributed. Thank you very much, all. And, I, I have uh, to say something. Uh-oh. Yeah, hold I on. Have, yes? I have to admit, ahead, I only just got passing a pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wait, do you get the airtight? <laughs> yeah, right? Admittedly, it's a slow build. <laughs> Well, I, I have to admit, when I read the, the pineapple one, I thought of the old, uh, when people used to go visit turn of the century in the South, when you first arrived as a guest, you would receive a pineapple as a whelping gift. And when your <laughs> stay was, when you've stayed longer than you should have, you would mysteriously find another pineapple in your room, thereby informing you it was time to leave. So passing the pineapple is like, the job's done, the dubs are done, the client's still hanging out eating their sushi, and you're like, Here's your hat. What's your hurry? Passing the pineapple. That's what I immediately thought. And then the idea of, oh, it's like a kidney stone. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then some. Yeah. Yep. That's wider at the bottom. It's got sharp edges and you never, ever, ever remember that there's that like foot long of leaves at the top. Thank you so much. Oh. Like I said, the poet <clears throat> he puts it into words. Ouch. Thank you. Uh, so I just want to again thank everybody who contributed. So everybody on the list here uh, is going to get a Logic TV mask uh, after the show. I'll get your address and everything and send it out to you. So thank you very much, everybody. Big round of applause for all. And thank you, Tim, for being the inspiration, as always. Sorry, I fell apart at the end there. But... <laughs> Pretty second so, attention spam. No, that's fine, man. That's what makes you such a great flame artist, right? You don't remember all the pain. You just keep plowing forward. So, Every job uh, was the funnest. What's that? Every job was the funnest one. Oh, amen. Amen. So we had another big thing we wanted to uh, announce to you guys that Randy and I, uh, as pertains to the forum, everybody's been so supportive and uh, we get requests all the time of how can we support this initiative? You know, thanks for building, for helping to build out this community. How can we help support the community? And so we decided to take, is Randy here? Well, uh -oh. here. oh, there you, you are. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. I just can't see you. What? I can see me. All right. Oh, there you, you are. You're the gallery. I got gotcha. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so you're like, I, uh, right. I'm, I'm scratching your ear right now. Maybe you must be in a different. Uh... Oh, is that what that was? <laughs> Thank you. I, uh, so yeah, like I said, Randy and I ha have been have been working on building a community. Randy's done this amazing job with the forum, and and getting that going. And thank you to everybody who's contributed. And like I said, everybody's asked, how can we help support the forum? And and uh, we've come up with something that we wanted to announce today uh, that we're really very excited about. So I'm going to switch back over to the the little laptop that could, uh, or that uh -oh. couldn't, for that matter. Oh man. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to switch back to the other laptop. <laughs> yep. Well, I'll just what I'll do while this while we wait for that to come back. Do a little uh -oh. normal here. And that is we're happy to announce today that we're launching a Patreon. Ah. Randy, you want to take it away? Yeah, sure. Um, so... Yeah, the overwhelming response from the communities has been great, has been positive. Um, I think there's always different ways for people to help. And I think you guys are, you know, there's a lot of familiar faces here and a lot of people who, um, who have the, the bandwidth and time to, con to contribute, whether it be, um, you know, with, with knowledge on the forum, like Kirk was rocking last night at Saturday night, helping a, fe a fellow colleague out with a, uh, with a filled frame store. Um, and there's also people that are like, can you guys just just give us stuff and we'll pay you. Um, and so this is an opportunity to, 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 to give them a chance to do that. Um, and it's not you know, life-changing or anything. It just helps pay the, uh, the, the website hosting and the server fees and, um, and, and you know, some software licenses. Um, we've got more big, huge, exciting plans for 2021. And you know, so far, when you look at the stuff that, uh, that Andy's pulled off, I mean, this is what, episode 39? Mm -hmm. Is this, epi this is episode 39? This is like, 39, man. Yeah, so episode 39, I wow. think there's, um, uh, we've served up uh, uh, 25,000 views on YouTube, um, 1,500 member uh, subscribers to the podcast, um, a, a little over 700 members of the forum, like a quarter million page views. Um, I mean, like, 
you know, and we haven't talked about one frame of white. We haven't talked about um, well, not logic all the fast. stuff that we've done. Logic fast. Thank you. Yep. Um, so with like, you know, just being able to kind of throw some money at it each month, like we've, we've been able to kind of, to kind of do a lot. At, at least it feels like, like a lot for, for full-time flame ops like you guys. Um, so, yeah. So what we're looking for is, is, um, is to, is to do more and, and to be able to, to share every day and to share in, in all the new kinds of ways that we think are relevant and important given the, the you know, the world that it is right now. So, um, uh, before you guys freak out, uh, the forum will always be free. Don't worry about that. Um, that's something that's just in, insanely important to us. And the Patreon is just something that you can opt into if you want to. Um, you don't have to. There's no pressure. I know that, like, you know, for the freelancers out there, myself included, the money is weird sometimes. So um, you, you can always get the help you need with the community that, that, we, that we are building. Um, and so, you know, this is just a little, uh, a little mint on the pillow, a little garnish on the creme brulee um a little uh sauce give us a third um, one randy give us a third i'm working i'm working on it i i, I, I mixed up analogies and then kurt gave me this like <laughs> ex, i could tell he was going something like a like a like a despania sandwich and i was trying to remember the despania <laughs> sandwich and i just i totally i totally totally just going to see anyway, where this goes randy i'm i'm dragging this on until jeff says something <laughs> exciting and important or like Charles has something else to chime in. So I'm going to wrap it up there. But yeah, that's kind of what we're up to. And um, uh, the amuse bouche. The amuse bouche. Yeah. Amuse, thank you. I've been in restaurants <laughs> for 10 years. You think I'd be better at this? Um, so we're yeah, gonna, that's what we're, we're going to put. A, and, yeah. I was going to we're going to put a link on the forum um, uh, to the Patreon. And, and we're, we're, this is just a screen grab of what's up there. But we've also included in there, uh, we were able to get some discounts from, from some of our supporters or some, from, um, some of our sponsors over the over the past you know, couple of years. Definitely check it out when you have a chance and we certainly appreciate uh, the support. We've got, like Randy said, we've got a bunch of stuff planned. We're gonna uh, reveal something fun we're gonna do uh, at the end of uh, today's episode. And um, you know, thank you for the support, we appreciate it. All right, moving Hello, ahead. Buddy. Moving ahead. Uh, let's talk about your flame wish list for 2021. You know, everybody no. always says, and this is one of my favorite, you know, one of our favorite things that when you see either, either on the forum or, uh, or on uh, Facebook logic, or even just when we get together, everybody always has, you know, some things that they would love to see and things that they wish were different. Um, the first thing I wanted to throw out there before just general conversation is, did everybody uh, show of hands who filled out the Autodesk uh, survey? Okay, good. That's, so. that's, that's a, that's a good mix. Um, I don't know what I, what I thought I'd do just to, to bring up uh, maybe as a, a kickoff point is, you know, the, the survey kind of asked, um, if you could pick the top three areas of flame, you think need improvements, uh, go ahead and pick them. In fact, I even created a little poll for that. So if everybody wanted to, um, you can pick the three that you thought I'm happy to share the three that I picked and the answers that I gave, as long as, uh, yes, I mean that's okay, right? Okay. Well, it, Just... it, here's, a, here's a question on that, Andy. Where would uh, your paint module come in? Would that come in as a compositing tool set item or something in your lighting and rendering? Because uh, you know, where where would the paint module? I think paint would update? be in compositing tool set. Yeah, but and where would file formats come in? Would that be conform? Because like I/O is is a kind of hurdle to climb file format and whatnot. Media acquisition, perhaps? Yeah, I would think the file format would be media acquisition. Where is that? Second from the bottom. Oh, oh it, was off, it was off the bottom of my choices there. Oh, and if you guys are looking for it, I also just put a, um, a link to it in the chat. And uh, it's on the, it's on the, uh, the, the forum called Tell Us About Flame. Well, I don't know if you guys can. You guys see the, the poll and the results and everything, or no? You can't. Can you see the results yet? I'm okay. Good. And, uh, no. No, I don't. I can't see them. Okay, I must have to. Maybe I have to end it in order to let's see the, the the numbers are rolling in. And uh, Yasmin, you'll be you'll be happy to know that everybody wants everything, <laughs> 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 almost equally. Yeah. So, no, there are a couple of standouts. Let's see. Wow. It's a hundred dollar test, right? <laughs> The old Autobox test. 
Okay. Yeah, there are a couple more people that haven't had that haven't uh, filled out the the poll. But you know, I'm just going to end it now, just so we can see. There don't end it, Andy. Don't. I'm sorry. No. Oh, you mean the poll? Oh. There you go. So I just published the results, so everybody could see. And it looks like the winner is compositing toolset. Hmm. Followed by what's that media in. acquisition and tracking. You can't get it in. You can't work on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ooh. Quinn. That's a life lesson. <laughs> I've ever heard one. Uh, it's always weird to have polls that don't quite add up to a hundred percent. It's like <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make all the sense in the world, but you know, it's, yes, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> Cut your head. Cut your head. New math. All right. So, so uh, who, who voted for compositing tool set and why? Other than Charles and Paint. And or specifically paint. What, paint. in the composing <laughs> Paint as well. Paint? Yeah. I, I would really like if once I did uh, uh, a paint on a frame and then I wanted to become a sequence and I did like 100 paints, I wanted to select yes. them all. This is pretty much it. And tracking because of 3D tracking. I don't want to be redundant, but. Yuri, I think you mean <clears throat> what, what you're talking about with paint. I think you mean that you want to be able to paint over the previous frame you used. You want to see no. it as a. Because no, that's what added... I want to do. Okay, no, in my case, it's on the added tab. Once you did like a, a one frame and you could change all the paints to go to sequence, but you have to select to one oh, by oh. one. That, yeah, yeah. And yeah, the, it's, it's yeah. really annoying. Yeah. I think everyone's yeah. been there before. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think well, what we just this said right is exactly the same reason why I chose compositing tool set. I want, I want to be able to edit those brush strokes at a, at a bulk. Please, please, pretty please. You'd think it would be a, a rather simple thing to implement. It doesn't, well, you know, it doesn't seem hard. Select yeah. them all. Especially since <laughs> somebody wrote a script to sort it out. Hmm. Somebody can do it externally. It should be able to be done, included in there as a button. That would be awesome. In an Good ideal world. <laughs> yeah, I have to say Michael's, uh, Michael's paint script has saved my my, uh, my my ass many times. Um, I, I just do it one by one. I did 300 of them last week. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, you the up and arrow keys help. Set up a hotkey for to change it to, to all keystroke. <laughs> so other than paint, does anybody have any other compositing toolkit requests? You know, I think we could all come up with lots and lots of tiny little things. You know, I, I think that's why so many people chose it is we all have a little peeve with something, you know, and we all have that peeve, of course, with the paint. Um, you know, I, I could probably come up with one for action if you, you know, didn't put me on the spot. <laughs> like Z-Buffer and layer ordering and... Exactly, or you know, the keyframes of priority. How do they even work? I can, you know. Who has used keyframe priority? I have. For purpose? Oh yeah, well, not I, often. Yeah, if you don't want to really use a true Z buffer to get rid and deal with edges around 3D crap, but you want something to go in front and behind, it's going around. Yeah. Z buffer off with a priority editor is so much more efficient. You don't have to like go jumping through hoops and yeah. you know, upstream and multiple. Yeah. I can see it, but I've just never used it. Do you remember, does, I, is, I don't think I've used it in 20 years. Yeah, the analyze button's still there. That's, I remember it's been about 20 years, but I remember having to do like a particle sequence of, you know, something shooting out motion graphics. And basically, it was like a, you know, it was a five second promo of just like erupting MoGraph. And that was that was how I did. Just analyze, walk away for an hour, and come back, and it was perfectly working. But yeah, those are not keyframes that I felt like ever revisited. <laughs> yeah. 
Those keyframes aren't avail aren't visible in the in the animation in the channel editor, are they? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. They're visible on the little thing if you're in your priority media mode oh, right. um, thing, but that's about it. Yeah. And I'm guessing particles and such would fall under the compositing toolkit, which is always a big. There's nine million things that could be enhanced about that. In text. Text. <laughs> you know, just uh, one quick thing on particles. Text and uh, paint. The, text the guys and over at uh, at Boris have made uh, particle illusion available for free, and it's only a two D thing and, and everything. But I've used it like half a dozen times in the last couple of months. Even if it was just to create like some looping element of something over black, like whether it was fire or smoke or, or whatever. So snowflakes. Definitely. Snowflakes. <laughs> definitely grab that if you get a chance. I think Brian Higgins has joined us. What's up, fam? Flame fam. Hey, man. Hey. I heard you guys are talking about Super Bowl commercials. I'm working on one right now and wanted to come hang with you guys. Oh, cool. That's February 7th. But uh, we're oh, at... wrong, wrong, wrong <laughs> week. We're, here, my man. we're in. <laughs> so how's it going? Uh, you know, it's a dumpster fire. Uh, the people oh, good. that I'm working on the spot with have hired a documentary style film director team again uh, who had no camera discipline. And so um, the files are all like... 20 minute takes and uh, I'm having to like, they completely re-architect my servers. Anyway, I'm four hours into the conform and haven't started coloring yet. So um, we've all been there. How's it yeah, going? So as expected, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're feeling well, I'm in my basement, not in my office. It could be a lot worse on a Sunday. That's true. Uh, Tim Farrell, your thoughts on that? <laughs> I got home from work about an hour before this started actually. <laughs> But yesterday I got to work from home. Oh, nice. Yeah, I do that. I, I do that every day now for the last 10 months. Um, well, Brian, we, we were just going through. Yeah, right. We were just going through uh, a, a, a list here. I don't know if I can. You, you should be able to see the, the polling results of uh, there was a survey that Autodesk put out. I don't know if you had a chance to. to I did take it. Just... Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So we were just kind of going through and. Uh, I'm really curious, like collaboration and remote review didn't only got two votes. Uh, that seems like something that would be kind of in the forefront of people's minds now that we're all working remotely. Or is it just that we've all figured out a way to do it? It's called have a producer deal with it. <laughs> Export <laughs> and say, here, Adam, you deal with it. Says, give us the notes later. <laughs> yeah, the, put, the, the, the idea of actually having client client uh, zoomed in and looking at your desktop, you, oh, you know, if it's posted with nice little metadata, you're saving yourself all the trouble of did their iPad crap out? Did their Wi Fi bite the dust because their kid's PS5 took it over? Yeah, oh, <laughs> no, yeah, no, I, I, my idea of collaboration is to hand it off, post it, and good comments in writing. <laughs> you know, I'm all for that with clients, but I find with, you know, with our own people, I really like to have them watching what I'm doing, you know, when I'm moving that title six pixels to the left, you know, is, is this okay? And they can say yes, rather than we go through an entire hour of posting and everything, and they come back and go, can you make it six more? And then they send the notes, Tim, in a uh, in like a, a PowerPoint or something, yes. and it slides with everything typed up and circled. And like, we could have just, you could have pointed at the screen. We could have been done in five minutes, and you spent an hour making that. Exactly. Yeah. If, yeah, if, if you're dealing with an editor or a in-house producer, and they're like, oh, this needs to be that, needs to be this. Yeah, a live Zoom session, in fact, will shortcut two hours out of the day. But client-client review via that interface you know, I've seen way too many colorists deal with that. And suddenly, you know, and these people are sitting in calibrated rooms across the country or wherever. And nowadays, forget it. So wherever they're sitting could be, you know, poolside with an iPad, you know. So, uh, yeah. I think, I'm happy uh, you know, to just I, let I, producers I, do that part. You know. I'll, I mean, I'll, 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 I'll uh, let you in. And I'll open the kimono, as, as, uh, as Charles and I like to say um, about Flamework. Um, I actually thought collaborative and remote review when I filled out the survey was my number one thing. Um, and for a couple of reasons, the, the first one collaboration was how even back before COVID and lockdown and all that bullshit, our flames were still kind of islands, even, you know, in the office. So I, if, if, if 
three or four artists are working on the same job and one of them owns the spot, like if we if we're in an, a situation where we can use like the the published workflow and things like that, um, there's some you know there's some automated collaboration, meaning that like renders show up back in my timeline and all those kind of things. But I really would love it if there was some way for me to like assign a team, you know, all the artists who are on the network or something like that, all the users that are on the network. If I could, if I could assign a team. So that way, not only when I send them uh, a, a batch group to work, like right now it's all manual, you know, I have to throw stuff in a shared library and I have to tell them that it's there and they have to go get it. And then they have to push everything back. And then, so um, even beyond just that a render shows up back in the conform, uh, just some way of being able to check out and check in, you know, the, the, the batch group as a container uh, amongst the team would be great. And, and, and along, I was just, just bundled in with that would be a uh, better shotgun integration. We've tried to integrate shotgun on a, on a commercial workflow, you know, not a big VFX pipeline with a lot of departments, but just a commercial workflow. And, and it's still at the point now where it's too, there's too much manual work and not enough benefit back, you know, like shotgun doesn't know what's in my sequence. It would be great if my producer from their office or at home could point at the sequence on my flame and say like, oh, okay, yes, the latest version of shot 17 is in this thing that we just posted or exported, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. All that information is still kind of too locked up Manual, in my yeah. flame or the, or in my head. So that was, that was mine. And remote review, I was just hoping for, you know, our whole deliverables, uh, pipeline and everything at, at, at Lively is all kind of locked in to or built around media encoder and frame IO. And so right now everything still has to go from me to a human being in another location. And that human being then needs to put it where it needs to go. And so if there was some integration with those two tools, uh, that would be awesome. Hmm. I'd love it if we could stop paying a thousand dollars a week for SohoNet or whatever it is they're charging us. <laughs> uh -huh. It's great. It works well, but like it's it's seriously a thousand dollars a week for you know we could have bought Aja boards and all TVs for everybody by now, and we're like, well, what's the uh, <laughs> the alternative? Just pay for it. It's better than Zoom. And rented them an apartment. Yeah, and that's for one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you right. know, yeah, for, that's for one room, right? One one room's Ooh. worth. Yeah, that we share. It's it's routable. So, but yeah. Oh dear. Wow. Wow. Anybody else struggling with deliverables? Just MP4s. Just yeah. MP4s? <laughs> yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Anybody struggling with deliverables in the color space problem with QuickTime? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what I'm finding. You send them a file and it's milky and it's not really milky. It's just what you're playing it on and all that jazz. There was some, Randy, there was a post in the forum, right? Uh, uh, what was his name? I can't remember his name who uh, came up with a, a script or utility or whatever that strips that Kyle. bit out of a quick time. Movie, yeah, right? Kyle, Kyle. Kyle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a massive problem. I think just people aren't the, the, either, either I've been insulated or just lucky, but I think the, I mean, there's just, yeah, there's stuff you can do, but there's no way like, you know, Firefox doesn't do anything, but Safari does. If you, It's just, there's just no, there's no way to deliver a great experience for your clients without having like an incredibly ridiculous conversation about everything. It's like, who the fuck's got time for that? So um, it's just, I think we all need to know how to fix it, but just in the meantime, we're just holding our breath until it's, it's better, but it won't get better. It'll just get worse. I'm going to look at it on the iPad by the pool. It'll all be fine. <laughs> exactly. I put sunglasses guys, on. You guys that are using Frame.io, do you compensate for Frame.io or you just put the file there? What It is what it is. Just put it up there because they could download it and look at it locally. Um, what browser they're choosing, like... You know, like, how, like you can have a separate folder for all three or four browsers. You can have a fifth folder for them to download and, and seventh and eighth for what look like, you know, who's got time for that? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, same for us. We just kind of throw it up there and just. Yeah. If it's a problem, we walk them through it, but it's like, geez. Yeah. I went through a stage of putting a, a web version on frame io so they could at least get it closer to what broadcast was going to look like but you're right it's just you know who's got time for that 
it's a can of worms too, right? Because you're just sort of introducing like uncertainty into the process where people were like, oh, but this is what it's going to look like. And then, oh, you're telling me it might not look like that? Yeah. I'm having like this, I'm having a flashback to, uh, we, we worked on a spot for Verizon like years ago. And that red, like Verizon red showed up as like five different shades of pink and sharp and, and, and puce. And it was horrible. Like, you know, I remember having like the client in the room and showing them on one laptop, like four different browsers, you know, and then, uh, um, here's your movie in QuickTime 7 and here it is in QuickTime 10 and trying to explain to them that, you know, what came out of here is good and that's all that we ever have control of. And it's just, oh. You just, you just like never, you PTSD. can just never, you can just never leave that conversation. Can I open the can of worms and say, why bother with a million dollar calibration system? I didn't. It seems like you did. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, look, yeah. I think there's different, there's different levels, right? Like there's, there's certain people that, that their entire reputation business model is built upon that. And then there's certain people that aren't. I think if you, if you care, then you invest. And if you don't, you get away with it. Like, great. I think, you know, it, it will cause someone to lose a job, but you know, like Andy was saying, there's just no way to walk anyone through all of that and just not look like a complete ass. Um, and it reminds me, Tim, of like way back in the day where, you know, you send it, you send something to someone and they say it's outside of title safe and it's not, it's an ag or whatever. It's like, unless there's a cohesive <laughs> statement from all of us at the same time, someone on this, it will just all, one of us will just look like an, like an ass clown. So I, there's just, it's, it's just not a healthy, helpful situation, you know? I remember the first pillar boxed spot I ever had to deliver. This is back at like the birth of HD, like. 2008 or something it got bounced from whatever one of these goddamn companies you know decides arbitrarily in the middle of the night what is and isn't acceptable right and we got on and it was horrible of course they don't tell you they call the agency and let them know that the spot has been bounced and brian's shaking his head and he's sweating now and his hair is falling out from mm -hmm. like the so uh i remember getting on a on a conference call with these people and they were reading to me that their specs their specs indicate that this deliver for this deliverable qualify, there must be image uh, all the way across the frame. And I kept saying to them, there is image all the way across the frame. Just it just black. happens to There's be black, black. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, how, this was on videotape too. It was like on D5 yeah, or something. Yeah. It isn't like there was some way to not have pixel information over there. Yeah. Uh, I've had a knockback on a continuity error. Seriously? Seriously, optical continuity. It was animation at the time. It was uh, uh, extreme reach. <laughs> extreme reach. It, was a, it was a shot of a horse and cart coming down the road as a wide shot, and then there was just a jump in in the animation, and they knocked it back because they could, <laughs> because they could. Yeah, oh, that one guy in the, the TV station in the middle of the uh, middle of nowhere at three in the morning was feeling his wild oats and wanted to uh, to make himself impressive. So he, he rang up the boss and they rang up your boss. And that's how that goes. Yeah, he's, the, he's the one who actually read like the FCC rules. And according to like, you know, chapters, Article seven, subchapter six, as the authority vested in him as a representative of the FCC, he's going to bounce this spot. Oh, I gotta man. say, I love how much easier it is to fix all that stuff with digital deliverables. I had early on in my career, probably 2004 or so, we were in the process of stealing the Dell account from Optimus because Chicago had this. <laughs> and I, it started with me running an, like an all day smoke session doing this big graphics intensive, like, you know, laptops rotoed out, whooshing everywhere and price points and all that stuff. And they were going to do this thing where they uh, were going to run it with a different 1-800 number in every state, right? So 50 different 1-800 number versions. I did an FPO version with a 1-800-XXX-XXXX on the bottom, and then also delivered to, uh, it was either DG, Fast Channel, or Extreme Reach at the time, a, a numberless version. Uh, and, you know, 12-hour marathon <laughs> session. I'm 25 years old. think I'm a god when I finish it. Uh, get, a, get called in the next morning. I left one frame of the 1-800 number on the uh, 1-800 list thing and cutters ate $15,000 in duplication and reshipping charges. I remained employed somehow. <laughs> oh my God. Go into the owner's office, fall on your sword, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> beg for forgiveness and you might live. And uh, I'm still here. So, um, 
but yeah, now you just do a rolling replace the file and no one ever talks about it. Jesus. Yeah, I've been there. I, I remember sword. one place I worked at, the tape went out blank. Like they actually sent it. <laughs> we worked for like a full weekend on like a title sequence for some movie. Oh my God, I'm blanking on who the director was, but the director had like a house in, in like the East Bumfuck district of Maine, like in the middle of nowhere. And they had to fly a VHS tape by courier to his house. And when he got there, the tape was blank. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't miss QCing dubs, that's for sure. Yeah, oh, well, maybe the real story is he had a head clog on his machine or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you got the blame for it. Yeah. It was only, the machine only had two heads instead of four, damn it. Oh, my God. Well, does anyone have anything else that they wanted to uh, comment on or share on about the, the um, features? Your feature requests? I put in text and particles. Just try to do my, my part, so. <laughs> Your due diligence. You know, I, I just had a stupid thing happen over the last few days where I'm bringing in a whole shitload of short little bits of raw shots from big three-minute takes, and they, they're all shot with four or eight channels of audio. And even when, when they're MXF, even when you bring them in uncached, it still is really, really slow if you bring in the audio. And there's no button to just say video only. You have to open it, open it up, you know, with a double click on the multi button and then scroll through the eight audio tracks till you find your single video track. It's, you know, there should just be a fucking button, video only, you know? It's simple shit like that. And there's tons of stuff that I think we could go through and, 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 and say that about. Just simple shit. Fucking button request. We are. <laughs> There's a piece of he... jargon for you. That's a BR. That's it. <laughs> BR. <laughs> Shouldn't be I, hard, you know right? what? One thing I would love to have is uh, is the ability to in batch to use one of my context points as a tracking source. You know, oh. like if I'm ever doing a, be a beauty shot. You know, and the beauty shot kind of builds over time. It just gets more and more complicated that by the time I get to the 11th action node or whatever it is, and I still need to track zits, I'm now tracking everything behind it too, or it's calculating everything behind it too. So without having to pre-render it or whatever, um, like how you can pick a layer that you can go context into. is like the very original source clip. And then, yeah, that'll be C1 that'll be or something. Fast. Yeah. Yeah. That way it's always fast. Exactly. So that's I'll plus idea. one that. There that's, you go. That's a good that's a great right, suggestion. I, I'll plus one that. I will then. You know what? I will post the. Uh, I will post the feature request, uh, the link rather in uh, in the forum. Thank you, Christoph. Does anyone have the need to want more screen real estate? Like to split the screen up into more viewers rather than just having four? Uh, I would not only second that, but I would love to see one of those big wide screen monitors turned sideways, so that you have a, a big chunk of real estate down low for things like your timeline, a big chunk up high for things like your your overlay menus and stuff. And then it's still had plenty of stuff in the middle for, you know, what we would still use on a, on a 21 or a 31 inch screen, okay. or 27 or 31 well, inch screen. Do most of you guys run multiple GUI monitors? I tried that's it. Fine. I wasn't happy with it. Yeah. But you do have two monitors in your system? Yeah. Uh, I did uh, when I had a trash can. Right. Because... I did temporarily, and so I tried it, and, and I wasn't happy with it. Right. So if a feature request would be to be great to have floating windows, for example. You could grab the timeline window and drag it across to another screen. Exactly. That would have oh, been yeah. much better. Yeah. I thought I was too, too restricted with the multi-monitor setup that, that seemed to come yeah. with the package. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I'm looking, yeah, because I looked at the scope box the other day because I, I grade a bit in flame, but I don't want to waste a whole viewer window for the scopes. So I yeah. went for scope box, but it was not accurate. So it didn't work very well. Well, if you, if you look at the, the Adobe model where you can drop menus either inside of their frame or outside of their frame or... And if you have a 21 by nine versus a 16 by nine monitor, uh, provided you can drive it at the right resolution, you could even open up separate tabs. 
at the same time. So you don't have to. You could have a timeline and be in batch. Yeah. Yeah. I've even, there is a shortcut key. I don't know if a lot of you guys know. There is a key sequence you press. It used to be. I don't know if it's still there. But remember the command control F8 would take you to the hotkey editor or something like that. The command control F7 would take you to this editor mode of the yeah. of the GUI. Yeah. And you the interface, yeah. Stretch the, oh, yeah. Oh, wait, that was with a the red line. Path maybe? of darkness, man. Yeah, yeah. With the red line, it'd come up and go, oh, my God, I'm in the wrong mode or something. The menus. Oh, the menus. yes. I remember that. Oh, my God. The menu. Could, like, customize the UI. Start yeah. moving your buttons around. I, that, 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 oh, I remember doing that. Oh, that I remember making like, the render button like this big. It's a great practical <laughs> joke. It's an excellent actually, practical joke. We we made a split the diff button in in the action with that one. <laughs> we actually went into the uh, .cfg for action, created the button, and then added the graphic for it. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, that was that was so. Long that's ago. when there was a lot more real estate. Well, that's when the, you you'd have your custom fish. Everybody had their own custom fish in the interface. Oh yeah. You know, you do, do the uh, DL right? icon make dot, the fish spin yeah. around. So and log the, in uh, dot tri icon. Trip the auto key color, whatever is trip. That's still the, all the Victor Lansky auto key stuff. Yeah, that's but it's not favorite. a button you can turn on anymore. You got to know the hot keys for it. The yeah. Key. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the secret menu. Well, cool. Well, I'll certainly go ahead. I'll take, uh, you know what I'll do after the show is I'll take the things that people have uh, brought up and I'll go to Flame Feedback and see if they're in there. And if they're not in there, I'll add them and then I'll just post the links on the forum so we can upvote them. Sweet. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Well, we're coming up on, on the hour. So I just want to uh, uh, shift gears um, and show you guys what Randy and I uh, are working on for the end of this month. Uh, I'm just going to let this image speak for itself. I think it. I think it says it all. Hold on. It's out of focus. There you go, man. So we are going to bring to you all the Render Dome. We're super excited about this. So on January 30th, this is coming to you live from the Boris FX Arena, which is really just the computer that they do streaming from in Brian Fox's house. But uh, Andy, Dill, and I are going to, are going to go head to head uh, and try to do uh, ordinary things, but in an extraordinary way. So basically, like we've heard so much feedback uh, from people about how like, they love one frame of white, but I'm not that kind of artist. I don't come up with things like from scratch or I don't have I got time. time for that. We ain't got time for that. So we thought it would be phenomenal to take like, take, actually Randy gave me this idea years ago. I mean, it was like a couple of years ago of doing like a flame, like, like gladiator Name battle, that or like, you know, <laughs> some kind of like live. I even, uh, maybe it was like two NABs ago or something. I even looked into renting an esports venue where we could go and like have flame <clears throat> artists kind of do like 10 people try something at the same time. Um, but it didn't work out. So we thought it would, this would be kind of fun, you know, to go head to head. And so uh, it's going to be Andy versus Andy uh, for the ultimate Andy showdown between me and Andy Dill. AKA Mill versus Dilkus. Thank you. <laughs> and <laughs> it's, it's, it's like uh, I, spent, I spent all of like uh, middle school trying to escape from certain nicknames and now they're all coming back. So thank you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, well, the way we're going to do this is um, Andy and I have no idea what Randy is going to cook up. Like he's going to send us both like a, a password protected zip file of a clip or something. And then live there on the 30th, he's going to give us the password. We'll take a look, first look at it and we'll have to do something and we'll see how it goes, you know? And uh, just like uh, whose line is it anyway? You know, the points don't matter. I mean, you know, everybody wins. Everything's made and up and the points don't matter. Everything's made up, but the points don't matter. And I think at the end of the day, it's just going to be something fun. And like uh, Iron Chef. <laughs> like Iron Chef Flame, exactly. And like you, can, time uh, you have to spend What kind of it? camera are you using now, Charles? Oh, um, you know, I, my FaceTime I shit the bed. So, um, <laughs> the other thing I the other thing I flip between my GoPro nine as a webcam sometimes because it's really, really nice and you can do it wirelessly, so you can take it out on the balcony with you. You know, you don't have to sure. actually sit at the computer. Yeah. 
So but, that's going to yeah, be on the thirtieth. You know, we'll we we'll have a little. Uh, we'll have uh, some more little promos to build it up. But I hope everybody will tune in. Uh, we're we're looking forward to a very active, uh, you know, a peanut gallery. A heckling mm-hmm. is not only welcome but encouraged. I have a feeling with this. That's group. really the whole reason I tricked Andy yeah. into doing this is so that <laughs> we could talk shit to other artists while they were doing it and not just results. Because like, yeah, that's yeah. what I miss most about COVID is just like, you know, just shit talking. <laughs> <laughs> It's busting balls, exactly. Yep, that doesn't work as well over Zoom. So no. uh, that's just bullying if you're online. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, right. That's cyberbullying. <laughs> that's right. If it's real time, it's okay. Yeah. Well, that's what we're, <laughs> we're you know we're we're aspiring to do is to provide a a, a safe uh, cyberbullying venue for our community. <laughs> Well, for the last uh, week, the internet's been pretty quiet. I don't know why, but yeah, it's been pretty quiet either. in terms of that. <laughs> yeah. So that's going to be on the 30th. Again, stay tuned for more stuff. And, uh, and thanks to, to the, the, the guys over at Boris FX for technical directing because uh, I think we, we've calculated we need something like eight, eight different feeds in order to make this work. So it's going to be pretty What are you great. using for switching, Andy? What are you using for switching? Little, uh, Boris. Are you using a hardware? <laughs> yeah, we're using Brian Fox at Boris FX. Exactly. exactly. Oh, my God. I think God. he's using vMix. <laughs> But that's a whole oh. other that's a whole other thing. But we're making graphics. It's going to be a whole damn thing. Um, oh, we're also so going to be it, joined man. by a, a co-presenter, uh, Amanda Elliott's going to be. Um, oh, that's right. Uh, with us, oh, with us talking that. trash. Yep, it's going to be great. There'll be color commentary. There'll be play by play, and at the end, it'll just be a lot of fun. So we'll tune in for that. Um, and then that's pretty much it. What else do I have here? Do, 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 do. Ooh. Let me bring up for you. Uh, oh, that's right. What am I doing? We totally forgot about giving away masks. One second. Oh, my God. Let me do that real quick. Da, 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 there. <laughs> All right, everybody. We didn't have that many people join us this week who have not been uh, on before. Oh, wait. Patrick came on. Let me have Patrick. That's right here. Represent. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. So let's see here. We have here a random name picker, which is brought to you by, uh, looks like Purdue University. So if you're into learning how to make chicken, uh, that's definitely the, the <laughs> Or losing a congressional race. Exactly. Thank you very much. So uh, let's see here. Let's see some of the finest JavaScript animation you can possibly get for free on the oh, internet. Oh, oh. This is not Flash. Oh, well, Miriam already got one. And she's not even here. All right, so we're going to skip. We're going to pick another name as our game show music shifts into another key. We should just give it to Mr. Frenet for actually being here and not hanging up on us. <laughs> hey, Patrick, look at that. Hey, hey. first time winner. Excellent, man. Congratulations. Excellent. I'll get you off. How, uh, how are the in-laws, Patrick? Uh, it's my father-in-law's birthday, so we just had some food. We're all good as I'm <laughs> zooming and toasting everybody. Thank you. <laughs> nice. All right. So thank you, everybody, for, for tuning in today. I know I, I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you to uh, Yasmin and uh, – did the other guy leave? He did. He did. All right. Well, send our regards, please. No, sure. but Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it, man. And uh, it's always great to have support from the from the team at Autodesk. So uh, be on the lookout for the the feature request that I submit. And let me just show you what we got lined up coming up on the old Logic Live as I hit my microphone with my hand. Okay, so next Sunday on January twenty fourth, we have the much delayed Synth Eyes for Flame with uh, Yulek Tarkanov. January thirtieth, of course, that's a Saturday, by the way. Uh, is going to be Render Dome one, the Battle of the Andes. I guess the winner is going to have to fight Andy Davis for the ultimate, you know, Andy supremacy. And then February 7th is the Logic Super Bowl show. Uh, It's Super Bowl Sunday, and I thought it would be great if uh, everybody came on and just kind of talked about the Super Bowl spots that they've worked on. Everybody has a story. And if you happen to have like a a breakdown and everything, that would be great. Or if you just have a YouTube link of a spot you worked on, that would be great. So uh, I have one. Um, Sean Cochran from The Vanity is going to be on. And uh, he's going to share one. I think Randy said he might have one. So, well, I don't know if I have a breakdown, but I will be broken down by then. By then, there you go. See, <laughs> way to tie it in. So yeah, well so please said. tune in uh, on the seventh, and let's make it a Super Bowl.
day to remember because I don't even know who's in the Super Bowl. And then uh, we're not doing a Logic Live on the 14th because yeah, even I'm not stupid enough to have one on uh, Valentine's Day as far as you know, <laughs> COVID is concerned. But on the 21st, Sean from The Vanity is going to come on, and he's got a couple of great spots to, to break down for us. He's a fantastic guy, and we can't wait to do that. Please check out, get, head on over to the forum. Keep contributing. Keep making it a great place. Thanks to everybody who contributes. And, uh, and if you haven't downloaded the, uh, the ML Time Warp tool, go ahead and grab that. All this is going to be up on logic.tv. And uh, that's actually not true, but I will have a new episode for you next week uh, on the Logic Podcast. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe in your podcatching app of choice. And subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're, uh, we're, we're, I think we're over 800. We're getting there. We got to get to a thousand. I think that means you get. We have um, to. We have to beat Joel Osos. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a moral imperative, but I think if you get to a thousand, you get you get free cable or something. I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, We're coming for you, Joel. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Joel must be stopped. <laughs> yeah. I'll defend him. <laughs> Thank you. He doesn't need it. He's amazing. He's brilliant. Too much. Too much, Joel. Yes, I'm with it. Great guy. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you to Cynicis as always for sponsoring Logic Live. That's it, everybody. Thanks so much. Have a great week, and we'll see you next week. Thank you, Andy. Bye bye, everybody. Right. Thanks, bye. everybody. Thanks, Andy. Bye -bye. Thanks, everybody. Andy, yeah. Thanks, Andy. Here's the link for that, um, that that membership. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll put it right here. One second. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was just looking now for it. Oh, for the Patreon. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And it's going to be on the top of the, we'll, we'll pin it to the top of the forum as well. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you guys. Bye. See you.